the last couple of days, hashtag Fire Free for Free has been trending on Twitter. The reason why it started is after Free for Free's reveal of the latest roadmap for Halo Infinite, people have felt very underwhelmed and frustrated with Free for Free's perceived incompetence, with points of contention being the cancellation of couch co-op and basic features such as the ability to replay certain missions only now just being considered to add to the game. And unfortunately, this is nothing new, although not quite as bad as it is currently. Free for Free have had a bit of a track record of having similar issues to this. I think it would be a fair statement to say that every game they've released at launch was a flop, with Halo 4 not quite fitting that description, although it lost its playerbase incredibly quickly, ironically having the shortest development time out of any of Free for Free's games, and somehow Free for Free since Halo 4 have failed to release a game that isn't buggy or lacking significantly in features. MCC after Halo 4 was widely considered unplayable at launch, they managed to patch the game to a somewhat playable state but still a very buggy. It wasn't until years later that they got around to actually fixing the game and then Halo 5 released with what was widely considered to be the worst campaign to date in a Halo game and for that point in time the least amount of content to release at launch in a Halo game on top of that and then Halo Infinite being more of the same as 5 with very very slim amount of content at launch but then at least with five new content was rolled out very quickly with infinite it's been a very slow burn so there's the explanation on why people are mad why they created this uh, hashtag and i'd like to explore what might happen going forwards into the future so there's things off i suppose i should clarify i personally don't think there are certainly people who think this but i don't think blanket just kick everyone i've talked to some of the employees at free for free these are like talented and passionate passionate people who are great at their jobs and from my understanding of the situation talking to insiders and stuff the fault is entirely to blame on management and that can be both blamed on Microsoft and Free for Freeze. Free for Freeze is the typical just mismanagement you get in games industry not unrealistic deadlines. Biggest thing was I think what the narrative is if I'm remembering correctly I might not be was that the 2019 build of Halo Infinite was better described as a hero shooter and then the entire game was scrapped and had to be completely redesigned from the ground up again to fit what we now have, the finished product. And the fault of Microsoft being they have a very hands-off approach with their management of game studios which typically is great, however when you have a struggling studio management the publisher should come in and be more hands-on and be like right you need to do this, this, this this, get it done. The management should be the people who should be examined and be like, should you stay? I think one of the biggest failures of Free for Free was just focusing them down on the path of you can only make Halo games. I think that was a very bad decision to make by Microsoft. I don't think any studio should be funneled down one franchise. I think they should be allowed to explore creative decisions that perhaps that franchise doesn't allow. At least to me seems very apparent with the direction Free for Free took several of their games with pretty much all of them being what would in other franchises be considered a sequel or a soft reboot being a mainline entry. So I think from day one that was a very big mistake. So going forward there shouldn't be one studio in charge of Halo and I'll explain that a bit later on. So what I think should happen is Free for Free is like split halfway. So obviously re-evaluate the management and how it was done and split the company in half so you have the current employees who are working on like the MCC and Infinite, the, like just the support team and you know that's what they do for a bit. I think the immediate thing is cancel the next 10 years of Halo. I personally think gunning for a live service as your model is a very poor decision. Live services, at least to me, good ones anyway, seem to be more of an accidental thing that occurs over uh, a very deliberate game plan. So we'll let the developers and stuff continue with support with MCC and Infinite to then later on once they're happy with the state of those games, two games to then progress on to whatever they want to do next. And the other half, the mixed media team to hop around to whoever takes Halo next. Because in my opinion, if you look at what Halo really is now, which is a multimedia franchise, 343 have done 
an exceptional job. Compare like the books that were released under Bungie compared to the books released under Free for Free or Bungie and Free for Free's policies. Bungie were very anti uh, other people working on their franchises, that's why Reach is a hard retcon of The Fool of Reach, the novel, and uh, I forget the name but the people who worked on the original Halo Wars. Bungie were very unhelpful towards their development. There wasn't a lot of good communication amongst Free for Free is seemingly to me anyway are very good at communicating to partners and stuff of side projects and spin-offs and such forth, what the universe is like and how things should be done. And then let Halo be worked on by other developers. Microsoft have made a bunch of purchases recently. They have some incredibly talented studios under their wing now. Infinity Ward and Id are the two that I've heard float around the most, with people choosing the two for the exact same reasons, that being that they have made in recent memory very good soft reboots of the respective franchises that they have been put in charge of. And uh, one that I'd also think would be a fit that Microsoft doesn't own but they could license out to is Respawn. I can't think of a single bad game Respawn have made. Uh, I jokingly comment all the time how the EA's only competent developer. Only downside I could see in Respawn if it was like solely them making it is they do whatever they want. So we probably wouldn't get a franchise out of Respawn. We'd get a really good game every now and again. You know, can't complain, but poor Titanfall man. And uh, just to round this video out, unfortunately I think this this does show the negative aspects of how Microsoft runs their game division and hopefully this community uproar about Halo Infinite will cause a change. I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't quite frankly, unfortunately, but um, recently Microsoft brought both Bethesda and Activision Blizzard to developers that, to publishers I should say really kind of what they've been. I suppose now they're just like developers since Microsoft is publishing their games now. They've produced good games in the past but due to upper management haven't they haven't done much good recently. You know, the hope was that with Microsoft now in charge they force them to be better, you know, crack the whip a bit in the case of Bethesda. What this has shown is that Microsoft is very hands-off with their studios, which there's obviously really big pros with that. You know, just look at Respawn and contrast that with everything else EA does. In terms of studios that their management is very lacking, that like Bethesda, like Activision Blizzard, that is the worst thing you can have. So unfortunately, I we won't see a noticeable improvement in Activision or Bethesda in terms of their policies and just their games output in general. It's a bit of a depressing note to end it on but there we go. Uh, if you enjoyed the video please do all the regular YouTube things. 